right, well, here we are for episode 39 of the Curious North podcast, and I am joined by the folks of The Local Experiment. How are you guys? Awesome. Good. We made it. We, <laughs> we made it. We didn't die on the way here. <laughs> and Jen's here, too. Guys, guys, Jen's here, too. Hey, Jen. This is Chelsea Jean at the Local Experiment, and I am here with Curious North, where they just interviewed Mamoa and my peeps in the back, who you can't see. Um, and now I'm going to turn the table, and I want to ask a little bit about them and what they're all about. So please introduce yourselves. Well, my name is Haley Anderson. I'm the director and host at Curious North. I'm Jed Johnson. I am content manager, write, edit, and strategize for Curious North. And what is Curious North? Curious North is the blog and podcast that seizes Minnesota by the culture. So basically what we do is explore our surroundings, much like you folks at the local experiment, and come up with stories about the people that are making our local culture happen. And because this is an experiment and you are now on my show, could I get you guys to come over here and let me interview you? Because I feel like you're so far away. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> no, it's good. I like it. <laughs> I like the way you stroke my couch. <laughs> So, what started this Curious North? Like, what was, what originated this little thing? All right, I'll tell you. Big so, thing. this big thing, yeah. Well, I started doing Curious North right after I graduated college at Winona State, and the reason I got into it was because I didn't really know what I wanted to do with myself after I got my mass communication degree, so I figured, bare bones, what am I really good at? And it ended up talking to people and being from Minnesota. <laughs> so, I was just like, well, why don't I just go talk to people that make Minnesota happen? Because, I mean, I've been here my entire life, and it's interesting to me. So, balls to the wall, let's do it. <laughs> That's pretty much what happened. Boom. And then, what, what are some of your favorite podcasts that you've done? I know you asked me the same question, but it's a good one. I'm stealing it. Okay. <laughs> yeah, no, that's fine. Um, <laughs> I really like working with artists and musicians, personally. So, um... Actually, just a few episodes ago, we talked to CY, who's a local hip-hop artist. Yes, and the, listen to it. Oh my gosh, he just gave so much and had so many things to say about the scene that he's involved in. And it was like, it was a really good interview because it was educational and eye-opening. And plus, his music is absolutely phenomenal. And like, you know, now we have that relationship with him. And that's like also a really good thing about talking to these people is like building that relationship. So music and then, you know, some artists that are out there. Like, we've talked to improv performers at, like, Huge Theater and Comedy Sports. We've got some more of that coming up. And, you know, even people that do more traditional forms of art, like painting. Matt Oleg, he's really going to, I think he's going to change, like, the whole art scene here Ooh. in the Twin Cities. So just, like, getting to know these That's people. That's quite a drop. I think so. That makes me want to find out who's fella is. You can go to CuriousNorth.com and find out who that fella is. Boom, boom. Ooh. Boom, boom. She's good. <laughs> She's <laughs> Taking <about> notes. <laughs> <laughs> so what about you, Jed? Why do you want to get involved with yeah. me and my Curious North? Yeah. Look at she's. Well, I love it. You just host this thing and I'm going to sit here and look cute like always. Well, yeah, do it. I don't know. I've been writing for years and I, I, I guess I've been out of it for too long. And what I learned about what I'm good at is, you know, I've had a corporate job for a while and I don't know, it's it's weird. It felt like I was developing skills that I liked, that I, I felt like I could take more advantage of, and I just, I needed to find something that merged those two, as that acted as kind of an artistic outlet, and also something that could really build and change things around the area, or bring voice to people that just couldn't get theirs out there. And uh, I just started asking around to some of my more talented friends, and a friend of a friend I met Haley and there just so happened to be a, a spot open for me I like it this is the best day of my life oh, is it? your eye itch oh you would be itch okay anyway so I'm back to the show and what I love about your uh, interviews is they're very uh, they seem very organic which they obviously are but where do you um, come up with your questions 
Well, I mean, we always have to do a little bit of background research on the people that we want to talk to, but typically it's just, you know, my own random curiosity. Like, part of the name of Curious North is because, like, that's, I think, one of my biggest personality traits is I just want to know. So even, you know, throughout the course of the conversation, if somebody is talking about something that I'm unfamiliar with, I'm like, tell me more about that. I don't know what that is, and I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't know what it is either. So (laughs) let's talk. Just... I mean, really, the conversations go where they will, but if I feel like typically a person might not give me as much from my research, then I actually have to sit down and focus my questions onto the subject matter that maybe they've already talked about or hasn't been hit on yet. So there's some strategic, but then again, not strategic strategicness right. happening. Yeah, absolutely. Whoa. Yeah, it's <laughs> just like, you know, just <laughs> see where I took that? Did you Setting did you stay with up. me on that? I did. I, like you. I followed you around. <laughs> Take that little ride. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, it's really just uh, you sit down with a person, get the feel for them, and figure out what kind of questions you can ask that are going to get, you know, the information out there, and then what well, you should probably stay away from. Mm-hmm. And where is the easiest? I know you, I know you dropped where to find Curious North, and what if people want to come on the show or be on the show, be a part of it? What's how do they claw their way into your life? CuriousNorth.com is first and foremost the easiest way that you can get a hold of Jed and myself. And also we are on Facebook and Twitter. We're just at Curious North on Twitter, so that's pretty easy. Um, we post some stuff on Reddit here and there that has to do with, you know, our content and oh, other local Reddit. content. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's the best. So, yeah, I mean, we're, we're starting to break our way all over the Internet, and it's, it's working out for us all right. Well, thank you both very much for your time. Yeah, thank you. And for giving us your time. Absolutely. I can't wait to post your episode. I can't either. It's going to be weird. In the best way. In the best way. The best kind of weird. So, toodles. So, I'm here with Matt Kowalski. Did I hit it? You hit it. I hit it on the money. (laughs) This is going to be a good interview then, if I can get that part right. (laughs) Woo! (laughs) And Matt is a filmmaker. Uh, Yep, yep. Correct, Amundo? Correct. And what is your your first feature film that just got released? Yep, Uh, Once Upon a Time in the Midwest. Um, it's, it's, it's It's actually been quite a few years, and it was a good learning experience going through you know, uh, cutting down time limits and trying to uh, get it picked up for distribution, certain festivals. Um, it was originally a two-hour run time. We ended up kicking it down to uh, to 90 minutes, and um, we finally are going to be releasing it on Amazon.com and YouTube, actually. So. Cool. And what is um, basically the plot of the movie? Um, you know, it's it's basically about a guy uh, named Jim. He, uh, he has a near-death experience, and, um, you know, some sort of window kind of gets opened up for him, and he kind of gets spiritually as, as this uh, enlightened experience um, and he decides that he's going to run against the corrupt small town government and how, how he decides he's going to do that tackle that is um, he, uh, he kind of enlists the help of some undesirable criminal elements in the town and um, you know it's all fun from there kind of like uh, Fargo meets Pulp Fiction um, big influences for me were like Tarantino Scorsese Kubrick, uh, Lynch, that sort of thing. So it's just a, a smorgasbord of, uh, of fun and, uh, you know, influences yeah. from films that I like. Absolutely. And what makes somebody wake up one day and say, I don't know, it's good, I'm going to make a film? Um, well, yeah, you know. Because <laughs> that's quite ambitious. It's, it's a personality <laughs> disorder, I think. No, oh, um, it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> I probably have one of those. You know, <laughs> we all do. No, um, you know, I, I just, I, I love movies. And, um, you know, I, I, I was really wanted, wanted to be an actor. Um when I was younger and <clears throat> I actually kind of got an agent and was in a uh, little big league I was a featured extra in that and then um, you know did some did some auditions like for Little Giants I don't know if you guys remember um, that film um, and Mighty Ducks and stuff and then it fizzled out but I always uh, you know loved film and, 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 and it turned into wanting to, to, to make films um, Tarantino like Pulp Fiction that was one a big one, one of for my me favorites, yeah for sure. it's, it's my favorite film yeah. because kind of change the craft of how we see movies you know Absolutely. playing with the narratives and stuff like that but yeah you know at the end of the day it was like I, I had a burning desire enough to where I was like the hell with it you know just shoot it you gotta pull the trigger to take a shot so well me and you chatted on the phone a little bit before mm-hmm. this day here that we're at right now yeah. and 
we're kind of talking about just like how the Midwest is kind of burning. There's something happening here. There, there's something great that's in yeah. the making. You know, there, there's a few, um, you know, and I think, you know, 100, 100 years ago, um, you know, a guy could pick up a pen and just write the, the next great American novel. And now we're finding with, um, you know, equipment getting cheaper, whereas Hollywood movies are kind of focused more on, um, you know, sequels and uh, superhero movies, which I'm guilty. I love Superman. I, I buy tickets to it. <laughs> but, you know, I think they've kind of stepped back from, from smaller, lower budget, character driven, dialogue driven um, movies. And I think in the Midwest, we've got, a, we've got a shot to kind of take a bite of that apple and take it for ours and, uh, you know, make a good film, starting with a great story. Yeah, and it, and it's proof to be told that there's talent here, and you don't need to run away from your midwestern roots in order to to you know kind of be able to capture that and play on it and make something of yourself in a way. You can stay in the bitter cold. <laughs> I mean, I have a name. <laughs> absolutely, and and I'm so I'm I'm very. Uh, deeply rooted yeah. here. You're not going um, nowhere. Got a lot of family, yeah. <laughs> and you know, a lot of my a lot of my friends and colleagues went out to LA, they're doing well out there. And now I want to show you how easy it is to support your local mm -hmm. artists and I am going to actually purchase this film once upon a time in the Midwest. Awesome, we, we need the sales. That's great. Thank and you. And where am I going? Um, actually, if people just want to, uh, you know, Google the title Once Upon a Time in the Midwest and Amazon, uh, it will come up, and uh, they, that'll prompt you to uh, to buy it. It's pretty Hi. simple. Yep, you're doing it really good right there. Cha-ching. That's what I'm seeing. I just ordered my new DVD. <laughs> Zoom. Thank you very much. Just that simple, people. Just that simple. We, we appreciate the support. And one last thing yeah. that I think is important for people is... What advice do you have for them if they want to get into filmmaking or trying? Or just anybody who wants to anybody, kind of make a yeah. film. You know, I mean, I, I can only speak from experience. Like, I needed to make a film so bad um, that I took all the locations I had access to, uh, friends, um, you know, basically just wrote the script around that my, on, my, on my locations um, and, and the friends that I could get to act. Wasn't real plugged into the scene at that point. It was kind of just coming out of college. And um, just grabbed everybody I could. We wrote a script and um, gra grab locations that you're going to have access to. You know that um, you know you're going to have permission. You'll be able to spend a lot of time. Um, get a camera. You can go. You can go. Go to a cable access studio. Um, you know you can go buy a camera. You can borrow a camera. The important thing is just shoot something because um, you know it's like anything else. You can't win the lottery if you, unless you buy a ticket. You know. Um, so you can sit and just think about making a film, but until you go out there and take your licks and make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, and, um, you know, that's that's the only way to make it. So, you know, it's real simple. Um, it, it doesn't have to be perfect the first time you go out there, but you're just going to learn and soak up knowledge and just get better and better. It's it's like anything else. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Yeah. Practice. And I think you wrapped it up well. It's just with us with the local experiment. I mean, what I do. if we tried to make it perfect... We would have never made the first episode. No, it's but all, we it's just all keep about going, learning. keep growing, keep going, keep growing, baby. Yep, and I wish everybody <laughs> luck, and I want to see everyone's film. So go out and shoot something, and let's uh, let's make it happen. And you know, you got a consumer right here that'll purchase it. And she knows how to use the internet. <laughs> <laughs> no, Thanks thank so you much, very man. much for having me. I, I really it. appreciate it. We do like a badass like. I'm, I'm like not good I'm at cool. handshakes. I don't know. Was we'll, yeah. cake? Do you have hopscotch here? <laughs> we could do I'm it. Really we could make it happen. Right, we better stop. Yeah, okay. this is getting right. weird. Let's talk it out. Thank you very much for having me. Cool. Hey, I'm Matt Kowalski, and I'd like to present to you an exclusive local experiment trailer of my film, Once Upon a Time in the Midwest. Check it out. damn town's about to give up on you, Jimmy. But let me ask you something. Why do you want this so bad? You can either be a small part of something big or a big part of something small. <laughs> My name is Travis hey. O'Keefe. He used to work for the Boulders a while back. Then he was made to walk away when they decided against taking him to partners. Personal vendettas, those are some serious liabilities, Wayne. That's three jobs in one day. And you're talking about broad daylight. You stick with the plan. 
We made it the Bumpkin's house for the drop. Hey, knock it off right now! Shut your fat, disgusting. <laughs> 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 Sometimes, using corruption is the only way to defeat corruption. Come back into that town with me in office and your profitability is going to flourish. He's made the decision to run his campaign on drug money. And he's going to turn your little town into the meth capital of the Midwest. In the future, Always remember, God helps those who help themselves. <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> Good luck, gentlemen.